Civil engineering is a major to consider if you want to design bridges, dams, roads, tunnels, buildings, railroads, pipelines, and even some civil engineers will work on aircraft or spacecraft structures and more. But depending on what projects you want to work on and what aspect of those projects you want to work on, you will go into certain subfields which can lead to very different career paths. The main subfields I will talk about that you can dive into in college are structural engineering, geotechnical, water resources, and transportation. All civil engineers will take mostly the same classes their first few years and learn the very, very basics of all of these subdisciplines. Then maybe their third, but especially their last year, they will take a lot of electives in the field or maybe fields they want to focus on. So first, structural engineering is about calculating and understanding the forces, strength, stability, and so on within a structure. It could be a bridge, a skyscraper, a landmark, or even a spacecraft or aircraft. Remember, these structures are very heavy and need to support their own weight so that they don't collapse. Now this subfield is the most math intensive and has lots of physics. All civil engineers will take a class called statics, which is all about the forces and systems that are not moving. In basic physics, you may have done a statics problem, like where does this support have to be for the system to be totally balanced and therefore not moving? You summed all the forces, which equaled zero, and all the torques, which equaled zero. And that's the basics of statics. So if you're looking at the forces within a bridge or truss, well, the same principles apply, but now there's just more to it. The weight is straight down as shown in blue, all the beams exert forces on one another, but the sum of them is equal to zero, and the torque sum to zero as well, because the bridge is not moving. And it's of course even more complicated than this, but if you enjoy that kind of basic physics you see above, then you'll likely enjoy the statics and physics you see in structural engineering. So that's just a very simplified explanation, but now let's dive into some of the classes they would take. One class that would be important for structural students is a reinforced concrete class. In concrete structures, they reinforce it by putting steel beams in the concrete. We can't see those beams, but here, before construction is done, you can see them sticking out. Or you can see a lot of them on these unfinished columns. So why do they do this? Why isn't concrete good enough? Well, concrete alone, once hardened, has low tensile strength, as in it does not handle being pulled very well. However, it's okay with being compressed. But to counteract that low tensile strength, they add steel beams and pour wet concrete, which hardens around them, and then those steel beams have high tensile strength to counteract those types of forces on the structure. So in a lab for this class, you might build the rebar, or the steel reinforcing rods, pour the wet concrete onto them, then once it dries, use a machine that holds the beam on both sides, then apply forces in the middle and keep increasing the force until the beam breaks or cracks and starts falling apart. That force being applied is sent to a computer that tells us the loading on the beam so we can collect the data and get the properties that we need. You could take structural dynamics as an elective class. Dynamics is about moving systems unlike statics. So this is one of the few classes where motion is included. So whether it's wind or an earthquake that shakes a building, you need to know how that motion will impact the structure itself and all the forces within it. I've shown this animation before, but mostly for mechanical engineers as it's a vibrating system that they can analyze, but civil engineers can get into this as well. They have to make sure their designs can stand up against any type of movement the structure may be subject to. You could take an elective class on seismic analysis, which is specifically about calculating the responses of a structure to an earthquake or one on bridge engineering, which would be a class on highway bridges, materials used, distribution of loads, and how forces are spread throughout the structure, and so on. Mechanics of materials, like how twisting and bending a beam or column causes it to become internally stressed. Timber structure design, which is about analyzing properties and forces within wooden structures, and much more. See how even if you choose structural engineering, you could still take many different classes from the other structure students? It's a very broad major, but hopefully you really get the idea by now. Lots of physics in this discipline, but mostly statics or forces and structures without movement. In the real world, these engineers often work on the computer and use software for their designs where that software does that advanced math to determine the forces throughout the structure, like you see here with an office block and its components. You may still have to do hand calculations, but most of the rigorous analysis you learned in school will be left to the software.